Katalofirome, Katalofirome. The Oresteia. Materosemasas. By Aeschylus. Sanavangevi. The Libation Bearers. Omeglosoglosu. A new version by Ed Hein. Pile of these. This is it. My father's grave. Hermes. Guide of the underworld, messenger at the gates. <laughs> the soil that I kiss is my father's grave. Agamemnon, the true king. The land on which I kneel is my land. An exiled prince returned. I have traveled many miles from banishment. Now carry my words further, please. Let him hear my cry. And no, I am here to avenge his death. I cut the hair from my head for you, Father. The first lock I place here for you. It is my pain and my oath. The second I give to the wind. It is my childhood. Gone. I am ready to be a man. This is my kingdom. I was not here when they killed you. I was not here when they buried you. But I am here now. And they will know it when this knife does what it must. What? What is this gaggle of mad bitches in black? Their wailing tells disaster. What does this mean? Has some new calamity struck this house? Or... No. Are they here to grieve my father? Pylades, look, they carry offerings to appease the dead. The Queen can't have sanctioned this. I put this milk and honey and wine and drums... Look, that girl in the middle, the one they orbit. Electra, my sister. What has grief done to her? So you smightiest of all gods, let me avenge my father. That is all I ask. Help me to do what's right. Here she comes. How that he's quick. I've been gone too long to have any friends here. We should hide. Maybe we can hear what they're up to. We are here by command of Clytemnestra, sent to grieve dead King Agamemnon and Offer him these gifts, but I do not need her command. Her command did not pull out my hair or drag fingernails through my cheeks. For years since our great king is gone, I've known myself through damage alone. 
A grieving heart must destroy what's left behind. Or a guilty one. A scream shook the palace last night. Families, lovers and priests woke to a noise that did not belong. Queen Clytemnestra squawking, dribbling and pissing as her dream showed her a terror beyond words. A terror the gods want the whole kingdom to know. Oh, they're angry. They seek vengeance. The unstilled dead seek vengeance. So the Violator Queen has sent us women here to appease the mighty maternal earth with wine and oil. I am ashamed to be her vessel. What can be done to cleanse her of atrocity? Nothing. But can something be done to save this house? It is ripe with a stench of murder, hidden from men's eyes in the light of the sun, an infected wound, fetid and forgotten, black and weeping, since the queen slew her king. Agamemnon earned the love of all Argos and taught us respect and just rewards. We thought these ways would last forever. But fear erodes everything. These days, success and getting away with it is what counts. Leave the bodies by the road, mm. keep marching. But though justice moves slowly, it cannot be outrun. <laughs> Even those that walk away without shame must sleep. And in their dreams, they feel the breath of justice on their necks. Criminals that dream of justice do not have long left. Mother Earth can only soak up so much blood till she heaves and churns and shifts as vengeance clots hard in her throat. Nothing can repair this violation. Even the purest contrition can only add insult. The murderer makes the Earth her enemy, unleashed. An absolute. For years, my stolen city has been defiled. I survived my family to become a slave, yet fate allowed it. So I accept the Queen's rule, just as I accept the rage that I keep secret. And that knows that the Queen is just a dog with a crown. Mm -hmm. And Aegisthus, a bearded bitch. Their tyranny rules only those parts of me that can be seen in my violent, hating heart. I am free. <laughs> Women, you are bound to the house. And you are here to serve me in performing this ritual. So please tell me, what prayer can I possibly say? How can I speak to my father truthfully? Should I pour these libations and tell him I bring them from his grieving wife to express our love? I cannot. I cannot pour these gifts and ask for a blessing on those that send them. So what do I do? I could pour in silence and shame and walk away in silence and shame. But that would betray my love for him. These are my mother's toxic gifts, but I must bear them. <sighs> Women, I know this is a holy place, but we live in misery together in the house and we share our hopes and fears there. Share your advice with me now. Don't be afraid to speak in front of the gods or anyone else here. I need your help. I respect your father, and his tomb is like an altar to me. So I will speak and hide nothing from you. His tomb is our witness. Please speak. Child, as you pour these libations, you must pray only for those who truly love your father. Who can I say that of? Yourself and anyone who hates Aegisthus. For myself, then. And for you. What if you trust us, child? Then pray for us. And who else can I trust? The boy Orestes, wherever he is. Oh. Orestes, of course. Offer your love in prayer. And for those that killed your father, pray only for suffering and pain. Yes. Yes, for them. I pray for. Pray for a man or a god to come upon them. To strike fear and bring judgment. To gut them as they gutted your father. Can I ask the gods to kill? Killing is justice. Blood is justice. Ask with no shame. <clears throat> oh, Hermes. Guide of the underworld. Messenger at the gates. Hear me. Carry my cry down to the powers deep in the earth, who still watch over my father's house. 
and bear my message to the earth herself, mother of all life, nurse to all life, to whom all life returns. I offer these libations to my dead father, Agamemnon. Please, father, pity your children. We have been cast out of your house, traded by our mother for Aegisthus, your killer. Your young son, Orestes, has been banished. Your people are slaves, and I am a slave with them. Our mother and her lover eat and laugh and fornicate in the wealth you earned. Oh. What can I do? Where is Orestes? Please help him, wherever he now calls home. For myself, all I ask is to be clean in conscience and body, by which I mean nothing, nothing like my mother. That is all I ask for us. For our enemies. I pray your avenger comes soon, and his justice is quick and final. Let him show no mercy as he runs them through, as they did to you. This is my prayer, Father, with which I offer these libations. I ask for help from all who hear it. Let the gods and the earth and the dead sanction justice. Let us now offer our dance and lament. Show me. Lift it up. A lock of hair. Who would place the hair on your father's grave? I don't dare guess. Tell us, do you know? I know only I would cut off my hair for Agamemnon. But this is not your hair. It looks like mine. It feels like mine. What are you saying, girl? I recognize my family in this lock. I think this is my brother's hair. Oh, how can the child set foot to you to grieve? He sent this lock from far away. Oh, that at least is possible. It is too dangerous for Orestes to return, even to his father's tomb. And we lament this every day. Oh, the thought of him. I'm shaking. Can it be? No citizen of Argos would have done this, and nor would she that calls herself my mother though it resembles the mop on her godless head. But I still don't dare to believe. Oh, to think of Orestes doing this. Orestes' hair cut by Orestes' hand. My baby brother, my only living love. Oh, the hope of it could kill me. My heart is a cathedral with a roof so high, just looking makes me dizzy and fear the fall were I to climb. To think of him doing this, grieving like I am, breathing like I am. No, I can't imagine it. Oh, I must know at once, is it my mother's? Can I burn it or is it his? Have I refound his love here, honoring my father? We ask the gods. You know what storms are coming. Should this girl let her hope take root or will the soil be washed away? Wait. Step back. There are footprints. This set is foreign, but these I know. As I know this hair. They belong to me. Even more than my own. Oh, I feel mad. What is this happy terror? I should probably pray, but my heart kicks too hard in my chest. You've prayed for many things. You've prayed enough. Who are you? Your prayer, perhaps. And who would that be? 
Step into the light. Electra, it's me. Orestes. How has this happened? I'm home, sister. Don't call me sister. Orestes is a boy. I've grown. As of you. Don't laugh at me, stranger. I'm not stupid. No, sister, you're scared. I'm scared too. We've been apart too long. I'm here. Oh, unless you break me back. How could you not know it was me? You saw my hair, you saw my feet, and you still didn't dare say it was me. I wouldn't have dared either. But here I am. Look. My hair. Your hair. My hands. Your hands. And look at my cloak. Recognise these animals. You stitched them for me. I have worn this cloak every day we've been apart. And I will wear it when I take back our house. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Electra, buckle your joy. We have many enemies. And we're not alone. Oh, great Orestes, trust us. We watched you as a boy, the jewel in your father's crown. Today we prayed for a man, and here you are. You're the hope we've been waiting and weeping for. We bow to you and offer our faith and love. <laughs> Thank you, good women. Ah. Don't worry, this is my friend Pylades. He's a handsome chap, so don't be afraid to stare at him. He won't tell you not to. I can't stop staring at you, brother. I see our whole family. I see our noble, foolish father and our poor, sacrificed sister. And I even see the mother I used to have. All three loves gone, but written on your face, I see Orestes, my only childhood friend. And with Zeus's blessing, I see the man who will drive evil out of our house, a saviour to restore justice and glory to our gods. Zeus! Can you see us? Please hear our call. Yes. We are the eagle's children left orphaned and exposed far from our nest. Yes, Orestes. Our father's blood and feathers, all that remains after the snake's attack. Yes. We are weak and we are dying. I do not yet have Agamemnon's strength. I stand with my sister, Electra, before you, fatherless, in supplication. Zeus, in your honour, our father poured more milk and wine and fresh spurting blood than anyone who ever lived. He worshipped you in everything he did. If you ignore us, who will ever honour you like that again? Who will ever spread your message if we die? And who will ever trust you with their faith again? Let us die and watch your altars go unused, forgotten and redundant. But help us reclaim our house and purify this land. And all Argos's glory will be yours. Children, be careful. Your voices carry on the wind and in the whispers of our enemies. We must move carefully. One word of what you say could have us all silenced for good. Women, I understand your fear, but Apollo himself has instructed me. He has sanctioned and commanded everything I do. I have his blessing to succeed and his curse if I fail. I heard his voice in his temple. And I still hear it now. And it chills me when it describes what lies ahead for me if I fail to bring retribution to my father's killers. I am Agamemnon's son. And this task could cost me my life, but it must be done. Apollo told me this. And told me of the Earth's violence against the sin of justice undelivered. And of ulcers, sores and lesions stripping men down to puss and shame broken stinking and offensive worse he told me of the furies pulled from a place blacker than can be known beckoned venomous into our world by the scent of a father's blood to show the cowardly unavenging son the hell they come from and pull him day by day into a new hell as he flees from horrors he cannot describe and cannot outrun Unholy, unknown, unknowable. His mind a twisting rope that unravels with a smile. 
But even if Apollo had told me nothing, I would still be summoned here. Once I was a boy and I was young and unfocused. But pain has made a choir of my cacophonous soul and all of me is channeled by its violent beauty. My grief for my father, dishonored and stolen. My rage at Aegisthus, growing fat in my palace and my shame for our great citizens. Their glory in Troy stupefied the world. Yet now they live like beggars yes. under the tyranny of a woman. No, two. My hated mother and her bitch titted Aegisthus. Right. Who will squeal like a girl before I let him die. Yes. Hear us, you three fates. Join us in summoning Zeus to bring justice. Justice is all we ask. Order is all we ask. Crimes must be punished. Hate begets hate. Violence, violence. We all know this. Let us do what must be done. For Agamemnon. Father. My father, what can I do to reach you? What can I say? Now that you are gone, I find new places in my heart simply following the love I have for you. But when you were here, I knew neither myself nor you. My regret is an ocean that you will never see. Poor boy, though his body is dust, do not speak as if his spirit is gone. A murdered soul lives on, sustained by anger, seeking justice, sharpening its purpose, just as oh, you do. Father, please hear us. Your two children who have sunk so low. Is there any hope the for us? The gods can help us. This lament could soon be a celebration. And the darkness over the house lifted for Orestes' palace to shine like a beacon. Oh, Father, you could have died screaming in a Trojan field with a spear between your ribs, and the glory of our house would have lived forever. You are a hero, robbed of a hero's death and a hero's grave. Man, you would have ruled the underworld as you ruled the living, with grace and glory, king of kings. And hear us now and rise up. Help us reclaim your honor. Father, I cannot wish you dead for all the glory in the world. I can only wish that you had lived, and your killers died in some forgotten land, their stink and shame buried under foreign soil. Your rage is beautiful, my child, but grieving words are just flesh wounds that reality can ignore. Orestes has the gods' attention. Combine your cries with his. Let the gods hear your pain. Show them the queen's true poison, and watch them pluck her from her palace like a thorn. Zeus! Your might and justice flows beneath all things. Rise up and inhabit us. Let our hands do your work. Break the murderers, burn them. Pull the hearts from their chests. Clytemnestra pumping pale and limp, watching her man dismantled, stretched east to west by ropes and north to south by dogs. must act. He protects parents. He protects family. Order and justice is all we ask. Have faith in blood already shed. It beckons more blood to spring, guilty from vein to earth. That is law. Furies feed on unanswered crimes, delivering ruin upon ruin, and bloody justice in gallons. Elemental lords, curses made law. We are the last children of Atreus, now with nothing but our prayers. Please hear us. Please answer. Oh, children, children, we live in your hopes, we die in your fears. Stay strong. How can I move you, spirit? Should I tell you of my mother's cruelty? Or should I tell you worse of her kindness? She wants to stroke my face with those hands. 
She wants me to smile and forget my father and forget myself. She wants me to curl up at her feet, but I will not be tamed. She has made me a wolf, and I must howl, and I must kill. Our mother broke him even after death. His grave was twice as deep, his fall was twice as far. No earth or tears she shed but stones that landed twice as hard. No, I say no more. I know enough to kill already. I'd happily die right now if I could crush her throat first. Children, you must hear more. Before she rolled your father into the ground, I saw Clytemnestra cut him to pieces. She flung in a pile of limbs and a necklace hung with softer parts. So he is remembered as a joke of what it means to be a man. and ignored. I lost myself. I thought I'd gone quite mad. But this is worse. Do not be ashamed. Let your father hear your mad noises. Let them overwhelm you. Let your mask slip. Let your weakness be a weapon. Let the gods see what she has done to you. Father, rise up. Father, I am your vessel. Father, 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 I am your Rise up and join us! Let my sword be yours. Let my judgment be yours. God grant us justice! Oh, sisters, yes. Say nothing, but I am scared. Clytemnestra's dream may have foretold more than we know. A fate delayed this long can only cause havoc and blood in its delivery. Oh, we may have been reckless in our prayers, but we cannot stop now. Father, you were killed like no king. Help me bring death and justice. Help me take back our throne. Save me from Aegisthus, father. Victory for us is glory for you. I will glorify you with a wedding and children. This tomb will be rebuilt a temple. Mother Earth, send my father to guide my sword. Persephone, grant us his strength. Father, remember the bath where they bled you white. Remember the next day watched you thrash and bucking. Not bronze, father but delicate woven cords. Woven with love for one purpose, your death. This shame must stir you, Father. Let these insults wake you. Show us holy justice, or grant us might and violence. Either way, I must destroy your killers. Hear your hungry children howling by your grave. Save us, Father, and save your line. We carry you in our bones and breath. Through children and grandchildren, a man lives forever in the light of the sun, lifted from the depths onto billowing sails in the great race of life. Father, hear our prayers. Live through me! Your words have done this. They can do no more. Look to your friend, Pylades. Silent as he holds your sword, it is only the act that counts now. Let the act grow in you. Let yourself know it will be done. Let yourself know it is you that will enact God's will. The act walks ahead of you like an animal. Follow it, Orestes. And we will follow you. <laughs>
Tell me, please. Why did the Queen send you here with these libations? She knows these are not enough to cleanse her sins. I cannot believe she feels guilty. Was it a final insult to my father? Well, my lord, she had a dream. What kind of dream? Tell me, if you know. Uh, a dream that sent her screaming to a priest, where she gibbered for an hour, then called on us to pour these blessings. What does she dream of? Does she say? She said... She said she was in labour, but the creature that wriggled out was a snake. A snake? Yes. And she loved it. She swaddled it and kissed it and held it like a child. And then what? Tell me. Brother, she offered it her milk to suck. A nipple between fangs? Fangs that bit into blood and milk and a tongue that licked the rotten pink mixture. She was right to be scared of this dream. She was more than scared. Her terror bounced off walls. Torches were lit to keep the dark at bay. But she knew her sin was upon her. Well, this dream must be me, that's clear. I was pulled from the same place as the snake. And I too was held and nursed. And if she screams at this, then she must have seen that she's made a monster put on earth to kill its mother. Well, there's no hope for her, but for me... I... To be a snake? What does it mean? Am I too to be damned? Why did you women not mention this before? I see only her death in this dream as you should, my child. Don't worry. Now, forget the vanished dream and see your palace up ahead. What is your plan? Electra, you must go inside and keep the palace dumb. Soothe all our mother's fears. Don't let her guess that our day has come. They chose deceit to weave their web, and deceit will string them up. This is Apollo's prophecy. And this is to be our plan. Pylades and I will hide, and lay a knock upon the gates of strangers with a Parnassus twang that matches our Parnassan clothes. <laughs> and when the guards see these two weary travellers, we'll tell them we've come with news. And what if they don't want your news? What if the house is still closed in fear? Then we'll wait at the gate, and any one of you women or any other decent citizen can cry, shame on Aegisthus for refusing two long-travelled men. <laughs> and I'll remain a humble Parnassan when good manners open the gates. But the second I see Aegisthus, before he can question my action, he'll know where I come from by the knife in his guts and the smile on my face. His blood will feed the fury of this house, its third and fullest meal yet. So you, my sister, be our eyes inside and let nobody guess. I will. You women say nothing. Or chatter only your nonsense noise. And Hermes, God of pathways, please, guide me through the dangers of my house to the bloody, bloody end. Monsters walk this earth, and horror ferments the soil. The sea is at war with the land, and lightning makes the oceans boil. Chaos burns inside the sun and in everything below. In their violence and pride and unbending will, it's a chaos that all men know. But men know nothing of women and our passion's treacherous flush, mm. which loves and mocks in the same small smile and can make the rotting beasts blush. <laughs> Althea loved her little boy as only a mother can. And on his birthday lit a fire that burned, so he never became a man. Or Scylla, with her kingdom besieged, and her father, its only hope, she had him strung up for the promise of gold and a kiss beneath the rope. These fabled women offended gods, mm -hmm. betrayed and shamed us all. But Clytemnestra's crimes are worse, and she has further to fall. Orestes is a child of murder. And fate has forged his sword. 
Only blood can clean this house. Violence is the law. What do you want? Tell Aegisthus that two tired strangers with urgent news have travelled long to see him. Please hurry. It's late and we need to find a bed. Is your master here? The lady will do, but for what we have to say, a man may be better at first. There are no delicate ways to deliver my message. Strangers, welcome. Our hospitality is renowned and we offer it all to you. Food and rest are yours. But tell me, what is this news it would be better for a man to hear? Speak, stranger. Madam, I am a trader. I have travelled without rest from Phocis. But I had to stop here. On my journey, I met a man named Strophius, a good man, but a stranger to me. When he heard I was heading to Argos, he bid me find the family of Orestes and tell them their son is dead. He died in Strophius's village. He has been sorely grieved. But should his family wish to grieve him too, they must collect the urn in which he rests. That is my news. I was to deliver it to his parents. If that is not you, then please show me to them, for I have a duty to let them know. Our house has a curse that works as surely as a poisoned well. I'm sorry. I wish the cause that brought me to your beautiful house was not so awful. And forgive my earlier hesitation. For a second, given the generosity of your greeting, I thought twice of delivering my cold news to such a warm place. But I must do what I came here to do, whatever the pain it causes. Stranger, thank you for your honesty. Consider this house yours. You too have travelled long and need rest. Servants! Unburden these men of their bags. Gentlemen, please follow these men to your chambers. You have the freedom of the house and will be treated as my own family. Now I must retire to my husband and discuss this disaster with him. Good night. He says, if you would. Lead the way. is here and his plan is working but did you see his face i'm not sure he can see this through he did not expect such kindness his mother's grief for him has shaken his resolve we must help him oh agamemnon and the earth above and below you hear our prayer lend orestes your strength and cunning help orestes returning to his mother's house not to become a boy again help him to be a man help him to be a killer Oh, look. Our traveller from Phocis is making waves. Here comes Cilissa, Orestes' old nurse. Where are you going, Cilissa? The Queen has sent me to fetch Aegisthus so we can hear the news from the traveller's mouth, and perhaps in detail, that is only delivered man to man. She is crying. Her tears are not for Orestes or herself, but for us, so we cannot see the joy in her eyes or notice how grief has restored her youthful smile. 
inside. She is singing. Agamemnon's line is ruined. This house is damned, and she knows she has won. Aegisthus will weep, too, but with none of her slyness. The tears he'll shed will be when he stubs his toe dancing. Oh, sisters, I thought I was too old to feel pain like this. Living through these shocking years of toughened meat and numbness. Immune to grief, immune to hope. A leper who doesn't notice her fingers on the floor. But Orestes is dead. Orestes is dead, my darling child. This news has left me as young and weak as he was when I first nursed and cleaned him. Screaming and terrified, a stranger to his own body. An anger before anger, a, a pain before pain, all of which I welcomed with love. Now... Grief has made a baby of me when I most need an adult's strength. I've been told to find Aegisthus. That boastful sack of fear and shit. I have to tell him that my darling is dead and direct him to those who bring this news. What is her order exactly? How attended will he be? Attended? He'll have his armed guard. How else will people know he's king? Perhaps your message would be easier to deliver if you said the Queen bids him come alone so as not to startle these tired merchants. Tell him that a mere bottle of wine may coax the truth that an armed guard would startle to silence. What? Our only hope is dead. This is no time to provoke trouble. Sister, what if Zeus himself were in the mood to provoke? Perhaps he has the power to change all that we know? Orestes was that power and he's gone. Not all prophets should be believed. What is this? What do you know? Just bid Aegisthus, as we have said. That is your task. Let the gods do the rest. I will do as you say, and pray it is their will. Zeus, mightiest of all gods, hear us once more. Help this house find justice. Help those who pray for justice, and help those who perform justice. Restore the throne of Argos. Orestes has returned home to find it full of enemies. Help him now, and he will serve you forever. Zeus, you loved Agamemnon. Now guide his son. And help him stay true to the path that leads to his murder. Spirits of the house recognize the true heir. Help justice purify murder's shameful stench. Agamemnon in your dark, dark tomb. Help your son wield your blade. So you can again look on your house with brilliant pride. Hermes, wily messenger, send Orestes your cunning. Let your sly words in his ear lift him to fly stealthily forward. Soon we will be singing and free. We pray, we pray, we pray, Orestes, when the moment comes and Clytemnestra cries out, be your father's son, not your mother's, and cut down his killer without hesitation or fear. The gods and the earth and your ancestors are watching you, Orestes. The woman you must kill is a Gorgon. Her death is sanctioned. The gods demand it. Kill, kill her and, and be free. free. Kill her and, and be free. free. Kill her and, and be free. free. Women! I'm summoned to receive a message. Orestes' old nurse tells me of travellers with tragic news. Who dares say Orestes is dead? The rumour is offensive to this house and offensive to me. I must see their faces when they tell me their tale. Tell me, do you think it's true? We heard their words and we lost ourselves to grief. But how can weeping women judge the truth? Or seek them in their chamber, face to face. There'll be no match for you. So no one's even asked if they saw him die themselves, or if you've all just been duped by marketplace rumour. Uh, these bumpkins won't have it so easy with me. Where are they? 
Where are these merchants? Travellers, I'm Aegisthus, and this is my house. Travellers, are you asleep already? Did my wife give you no candles? Travellers? Please. Friends, step into the light. Zeus, we pray one last time. The moment is here. Let Orestes' blade deliver justice. <gasps> Whose death did we just hear? Whose house are we now in? Shush, shush, shush. Play dumb. Do nothing till we know. Our job is done. Fate has struck. Wake up! Wake up! Hey. Sound the alarm! Oh, oh, oh. Alarm! It just does his dead! Wake up! The king is dead! Wake up! This noise. Protect the house. Alarm! Protect the house. Protect the house. Have you lost your mind? The blood red monster walks the horse. It just was his dead. It's just. to the house of Argos. Then I am your queen. Maybe. Justice will decide that. And you will face it alone. It is not justice. It is a man. Then you have nothing to fear. Everyone knows you can kill a man. Of course. Trickery collects the debt I owe it. At least I have a blade. Fate is not yet decided. <gasps> Orestes! Do you recognize me now? And here? Oh. You recognize your lover? Oh, what have you done? What have you done to my Aegisthus? I left his legs where we stood. Pylades kept his tongue. And his chest I brought for you. And the rest of him I'm wearing. Oh. So you won't forget me twice. Oh, no. No. You all have the same mother. I'm going to climb back inside you.
You have no idea of the love I have for you. Kill me if you must, but I know you. This barbarity is just a poison you have drunk to quiet your nerves. You once drank my milk. It was pure love I fed you. I poured my life into you. A love that humbled me. It is still sacred. You know this, my son. Don't damn yourself. Put down your blade. Pylades, I can't. How can I kill her? She's my mother. Is this sin too dreadful? My friend, shame is nothing. The word of God is everything. Do it now. No! No, please! Mother, uh, gather your lover together so you can be butchered with him. I it. gave you life! You killed my father! I was acting for fate! It acts on you now. Think of the furies this will unleash! Your crime brought me to this. Foulness demands foulness. Yes. Sin demands sin. You are about to kill your mother, my darling. This mess of flesh. <laughs> These are Agamemnon's murderers and the thieves of my house. They shared everything they stole, and now they are indistinguishable. This net that holds them is the same they wove for my father. See how beautifully they made their device that bound the hero of Troy as he bathed so that their blades could do their work. Look at it! See yourself in it! I want the father of the world, Zeus, to see it. What I have done is merely justice. For Odysseus, I care nothing. He was an adulterer who received an adulterer's death. But of Clytemnestra, who killed her children's father, what is there to say? <laughs> if her poison were in a snake, it would rot the fangs. And those that pitied the creature would die for the mistake of a caress. She had to be killed. I regret nothing. Were I to perish, 
childless now. The relief of cleansing this house would be a more than worthy reward. With our words, we must now lament Egistus, for Orestes has surely proved that true, just suffering gets buried till it grows beyond words into deeds. Do any still doubt my mother's guilt? Look at this cloak. The one my father wore as he crushed Troy. The one in which they killed him. Here, and here are where the blades went. This is the stain of his last warm blood. Glory to Agamemnon! Yes! I offer my father praise here, in his own house for the first time since he died. I've known ruin since she did this, so I recognise what's upon me now. No one lives clean in this world. Pain is here or pain is coming. That's how we know we are mortal. My thoughts gallop away from me, a horse I cannot control, but behind which I am tied. My senses are reeling at this new country I'm in. These words mean less the more I speak them, so while I still have the measure of my mouth, let me proclaim... I killed my mother for justice. She was a wound on this house and on the world, and the gods know this to be true. Everything I have done, I was instructed to do by the oracle of mighty Apollo. And that made it clear to me the cost of ignoring his command would be horror no mortal can conceive. He also told me to hold these leaves. They declare my piety and protect me. I must find sanctuary at the navel of the world, Apollo's temple, with its eternal burning fire. He told me to flee there once I had enacted his will. So let all of you see, my awful act was holy. My flight is holy. I have done nothing but obey my fate and do God's bidding. Remember this when retribution seeks me out. But Orestes... The city rejoices. There is no retribution. Look around you. This is a beautiful dawn. Brother, you have saved us from two abominations. And we love you like no other. Hail Orestes! Hail Orestes! Look. Can you see? These grey cloaked women encroaching with stone eyes and snaked hair. They've come for me. Orestes, you must rest. You are your father's hero, loyal beyond words. This is your greatest day. You're exhausted, but you're safe here with us. They're here. They're here. My mother's furies have come already. Orestes. Be still. There is nothing there. Your innocence is shocked by the blood in which you're drenched. That is all. Let us clean. Ah! 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 Apollo, they're everywhere. They've come for me with their oozing eyes. Oh, my mother was right. Apollo, why did you not warn me? Run, Orestes, run. Hurry to the temple. Trust in Apollo's word. Make way! Make way! Oh, they are upon me! Make way! Make way! Orestes needs the gods' help, so we must pray again for Orestes and for peace. This house has seen a third event in this shameful cycle of sin. The first saw children murdered. The second, a queen slay her king. Now a mother lies dismembered by the vengeful hands of her son. Is this the last depravity? Or is there more to come? <laughs>
In The Libation Bearers by Ed Heim after Aeschylus, Orestes was played by Will Howard and Electra by Joanne Froggart. The chorus were Sheila Reed, Amanda Lawrence and Caris Eleri. Clytemnestra was Leslie Sharp. Aegisthus, Sean Murray. Cilissa, Carolyn Pickles. Pylades, Joel McCormack. The guard, David Seddon. And the doorman was John Norton. The music was created and performed by the percussionists of the BBC Concert Orchestra, Stephen Webberley, Alastair Malloy and Stephen Wibley, and the singer was Adriana Feshteu. Sound was by Cal Knightley, and the director was Mark Beebe.